hope the defendant is listening as I speak loud and clear today. And yes, I refer to her as defendant because I will not give her the respect of calling her by her name. She referred to Dante over and over again as the driver, as if killing him wasn't enough to dehumanize him. She never once said his name. And for that, I'll never be able to forgive you. And I'll never be able to forgive you for what you've stolen from us. I hope you're listening and don't mistake any of my words because we can't afford the defendant to make any more mistakes. His name is Dante Demetrius Wright. Let me tell you what you've stolen from us. Dante was born October 27th, 2000 at 9.25 a.m., one of the happiest days of our lives. My husband named him after Dante Culpepper because he loved the Vikings and knew our son was a star from the moment we looked into his eyes. He played way too much and he joked a lot. Even when he'd get on my nerves, I couldn't stay mad at him because Dante's goofy laugh. Dante loved hard, loved his family, friends, and his son. Dante's smile was genuine and big, just like his dreams. You took this. You took his future, what he could have been, and it was so many things. April 11th was the worst day of my life. A police officer who was supposed to serve and protect so much took so much away from us. She took our baby boy with a single gunshot through his heart. She shattered mine. My life and my world will never, ever be the same. And I often replay that phone call in my head over and over again. And I blame myself because I should have told him that it was, I shouldn't have told him it was going to be all right. I told him he was going to be okay. And just to find out a few minutes later, he wasn't. A police officer that took an oath to serve and protect for 26 years. But not on this day. On this day, she did not protect. She failed Dante, our family, and our community. She did not render aid to Dante. Elena or the elderly couple that was in the vehicle. His car was held at gunpoint for over five minutes while my son bled out in the driver's seat. The last memories of Dante's life is now watching him being shot over and over again. Seeing his lifeless body pulled and dragged out to a grassy spot where they left him on the ground for hours as people all over the world watched. I had to cry from behind a caution tape. I couldn't go to be with him. My motherly instincts was to go, to hold him, to caress him, kiss him. And even in my mind in that moment, I wanted to save him. Another opportunity that was stolen from me. She left our world with so much darkness and heartache. The best way that I can explain it is what I feel every day since Dante was killed is comparing it to a sinking feeling that a mother gets when she turns around and realizes her kid is missing in a grocery store and you can't see him, feel him, touch him, know if he's scared, safe, okay. She took a grandson, brother, uncle, cousin, friend. She took a son from his father, a son from his mother. But most of all, she took a father from his son. Dante was only 20 years old. He had so much life ahead of him. The defendant left us with memories and a picture. I have to grieve in public. The whole world sees my crying face and it's plastered all over. 
My shattered heart has been on display for almost a year now, and I have to live in this nightmare, watching my son shot and killed over and over again. The defendant will be here to watch her sons marry, have children, buy a house, start a family. For me, every day, I could only hope to wake up and see Dante walk through the door and watch him play with his son, mess with his sisters, laugh with his brothers, a hope that's never going to come true. Your Honor, I'm asking you to hold the defendant to the highest accountability. She was a person of authority who portrayed her badge. Not only when she shot Dante, but when she rolled around on the ground crying for herself. I'm going to prison. I shot a boy. Call Chuck, her union rep. When she shouldn't have, she should have fact said, please go save him. How is he doing? Is he okay? Please help him. She didn't even try, Your Honor. She didn't try to save him. You should have done better. <laughs> when it comes to trial, I was there every single day. My heart wanted to see remorse, sadness in her eyes. I wanted to see her mouth the words, I'm sorry. But she sat there with such entitlement and privilege. She never once looked at us, passing through the hallways every day. As she sat on the stand, not at all, no eye contact, nothing. Then she finally said, I'm sorry it happened. Those are her exact words. That was coming after a break, Your Honor, that the defendant had time to be coached on how to gain some sort of sympathy from the jury but not me. I can't give the defendant sympathy. Your Honor, I'm stuck with three questions I ask myself. How do you shore remorse when you're smiling in your mugshot after being sentenced to manslaughter, after taking my son's life? How do you say you're sorry with no tears? How much time is my son's life worth? I know here today the defendant and her attorney they're going to tell the court how sorry she is. Her family will may even give victim impact statements. And afterwards, both the defendant and her family will be able to talk, hear each other's voices, hug, kiss, say I love you as her husband did on sentencing on verdict day. Eventually, her sentence will be fulfilled and she will have her whole family to be with her at dinners and holidays. Again, another thing that has been stolen from me. Please keep in mind the impact this has caused her family and herself is just a small passing. It's just a small storm that's going to pass compared to our life sentence without Dante. Dante Demetrius Wright, I will continue to fight in your name until driving well black is no longer a death sentence. I'm proud to be your mom and I love you, Dante. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mrs. Wright.